Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ranger Stadium. My name's Tony Brubaker, and I'm alongside former Baylor Bear and Washington Redskin Jeff Gandy. Austin Milam is on stats, and we welcome you to Ranger Stadium for what we expect to be another great football game, Jeff, as the Rangers come to town 4-0, and and it's the second district game of the season. What else do you want? Well, Tony, it's nice to be 4-0 at the start, end of yeah. September. I mean, every coach, that's their that's their goal for September. You know, I think, but more importantly, at this point in the season, the Rangers kind of have an identity. They really figured out who they want to be this season. And we've seen that throughout the last four games where they've had some adversity, we've had some injuries, and they've had some men come up, and really there's been no decline in the execution whatsoever. You know, I thought that they have become a, a team of toughness, and they look like they're in mid season stride right now. No doubt. It's all about culture and the kind of culture that Larry Hill has installed. We'll talk more about that when we come back after this timeout on the Ranger Network. Here we go, tie ball game with just two seconds left on the clock and the Rangers are looking to score. Here's a snap. Bayless who is wide open down the near sideline. And he makes a catch at the 10, the five, touchdown. My goodness, what a play and the Rangers win. Just press enter and your GBTC Home Home DVR will record your show automatically. Thanks, Doug from GBTC, who looks exactly like Ranger Senior CJ Keeler. I'm just Doug, here to help. Fumble! Here you go. Can I help you set up your favorite channel list now? back to Ranger Stadium just a minute or so away from the start of tonight's game, Jeff. And uh, why don't you give me two or three things that you think are most important for the Rangers to perform tonight if they are to win this game? Well, pretty simple. I, I wouldn't change a whole lot. They've been pretty successful the last four weeks. But in this particular situation, coming off a high, real emotional win last week versus Steele, and now you're playing a team who hasn't won a game this year, I think basically come out and play very fast. Be physical, be fearless in what you're doing, and just be that. Have that balanced offense, one-to-one -one ratio, from run to pass, and then control the clock through that, and just do your business to take care of business. It's real simple. You mentioned the Rangers won the toss, so they will kick off here to start the game as the Hornets will receive, and as usually the case, it is Mason Reed handling the kickoff chores and uh, four games into the season I know one thing we talk about a lot on special teams is how good the kickoff coverage has been for the Rangers that very seldom has a receiving back returned the ball with any kind of authority and that's something we're looking forward to tonight. You could look at the kickoff as almost like an offensive play. How you place that kickoff is so important for field position. Mason Reed will put a toe to the ball and will be underway here at Ranger Stadium. The kickoff is a low line drive that sails into the end zone and will not be picked up by Damon Davis. So the Hornets will come out and start first and 10 as we're about ready to go. Their offensive situation is like this. Sophomore quarterback is uh, Charles Oglesby. He has a wide receiver named Edward Stokes, a senior at six foot, 165 pounds, who's caught 11 passes for 118 yards and a touchdown. And Blake Strelzik, Strelzik is a 5'10", 160 senior who's caught nine passes but also has 11 carries. So as they come out with uh, Oglesby at quarterback, a lone setback behind him, two receivers to the right. Oglesby takes it, fakes it, throws a quick pass out to the right flat. That looks like Strelzik, who makes a good catch, spins back to the middle, gets tackled by a couple of different defenders. Looks like uh, uh, Woodard is there as well as Witcher. So a gain of about six on first down at second and four. It looks like the Hornets came out in 11 personnel. That means one running back, one tight end, and that leaves you three wide receivers. And that time, Oglesby just saw that, they're, that the inside receiver his man was 12 yards off, so it was an easy just, no, that's who you need to throw it to. It was really easy. Easy pass and catch. 
So they'll send two receivers out to the left this time. Everything else looks the same. The handoff is made, but nowhere to go is the running back. It looks like it could be Frank Lott. We saw it is Lott. Michael Stevens, the starting tailback, was in street clothes during warm-up, so we don't expect to see him tonight. So Lott gets, uh, really, it loses a yard on the carry by good interior defense. It's third and five. Hornets have a huddle as they wait for the call from the sideline, and uh, Oglesby finally comes up with it. A single receiver left, two to the right. Tandem of backs in the backfield, one behind and one to the right. Snap, and the ball is loose. And down before contact, but then there was contact, is the receiver who took uh, the handoff. Like that was the man who was back in kick coverage, Damon Davis, listed as a defensive back on the roster. He was the uh, slot back that was going to get the handoff there, and it goes awry. A loss of several makes it fourth and 13. Not a good, not a good way to start the game if you're a Hornet fan, but uh, maybe they can get a good punt off here and flip the field position. Woodard is back. Strelzik is the punter. It's a short kick. It's a good bounce. It's a Hornet bounce, and it'll cross midfield to about the 45. So it's a punt of 20, 32 yards exactly, 32. And the Rangers will start in great field position. As we mentioned this last week in the steel game, the Rangers always seem to be in good field position in that game, and that was a good long, uh, went a long way to helping them. Well, <clears throat> that play, that whole field position was set up by that third and five, where there was a missed handoff by Oglesby and it resulted in a fumble and recovered by them, but by the time you get the punt off 32 yards, here you have the Rangers starting off in great field position. So from the 46, a receiver either way. Williams fakes a handoff, now has some receivers down the field. It's a nice throw and catch. It's Rios down the sideline, inside the 30, now across the 20, has one man to beat at the goal line, and he doesn't. He makes it in, he doesn't get stopped, and that's a first play touchdown of 54 yards from Levi Williams to Ricky Rios, the third touchdown of the season for Rios, and that was way too easy. Way too easy. That's basically a slot formation, bootleg away from it, and you have Rios dragging across the field, and the linebackers didn't even pick him up. He was wide open and ran it in for the touchdown. Coverage was like there was no one there is the best way to describe it, and Rios came across the field. Mason Reed in to try the extra point. And it's the snap is bobbled, and we're going to try to throw it, and it goes incomplete. The holder is Jeremiah Gilliam, the uh, backup wide receiver, the junior. I don't know if this, the snap was a little too low. He didn't handle it real yeah. well, so he picked it up and tried to make a play out of it. So it goes awry, and the Rangers lead it 6 to nothing with the failed extra point. Yeah, that's pretty much an automatic. If there is a bobble or a flubbing of the, of the snap from the center to the holder, it's an automatic go call, and you pick it up and you try to find the, the open receiver and try to get something out of nothing. That time, it just the, the pass fell a little short. So Gilliam's attempt for a two-point conversion after the uh, bobbled snap goes awry, and the Rangers will do what they just did a couple of minutes ago, and they'll kick off again. We're at 9.43 in the first quarter, so we played two minutes and some change, and the Rangers are up six to nothing. You know, the one thing that we've noticed the last four games, Tony, when it comes to East Central and their defense, they're real susceptible to that explosive play, big play that's pat over 15 yards plus, and that plays exactly the same thing that's been killing them all season long. Mason Reed will again get himself ready. Our official signal is made, so Reed will move to kick. This one again, a line drive, it'll bounce, and into the end zone it goes, and again, Davis wants nothing of it, and the uh, Hornets will start first and 10 from the 25. I don't know as well as the Rangers have kicked off this season. I don't know if the, the Hornets just say, we don't really want to go against this <laughs> and get pinned down deep. If we let it go into the end zone, which Reed does an awful lot, right. we'll at least start off on the 25, and that's what they'll do again. Well, let's see what they do coming out their second series. Uh, they were successful hitting that slot quick pass. It's just a quick hitch. We'll see if they go back to it. 
So two receivers break out to the left. There's a tight end and a wing on the right. Oglesby takes it, gives the handoff. It's to Lott. He gets a couple of yards as he stumbles across the 25. As, uh, he had some pressure, uh, defensive uh, line pressure that came in there. It was uh, Pow Pow who got a leg on him, but then he was down at the 27-yard uh, line, so a gain of two. Right. You know, it's interesting to note, when you look at the, the Hornets' offensive line, there's two sophomores that are starting at the offensive line, so they're younger, they're not as big as the defensive line for the Rangers, so it's funny how they're trying to establish themselves in the running attack on the front end of the game. So two receivers left again, a tight end right. Now the slot is on the left side. Oglesby wants to wiggle out to the left, and then as he gets pressure on a nice hit by uh, Zuber, or Keeler, pardon me, he throws it incomplete out of bounds. It'll be third down and eight. Keeler did a real nice job that time, just coming off the edge, didn't get faked out by the, by the fake and the handoff, and put pressure on Oglesby that really resulted in a bad pass. So great job by Keeler. Keeler goes up against a junior offensive lineman who has not hit him yet, I don't believe. So it is third and eight. Single setback behind o Oglesby. He gets the ball. It's Lott. Has a seam to the right that gets shut quickly by Will Gibbons. He'll end up getting a yard, maybe two, up to the 29, I think, is the spot, and that'll bring up fourth down and six. Hornets are staying that 11-man personnel package. One running back, one tight end, three wide receivers. And they're trying to establish the run right off tackle with that. But the defensive front seven, Victor Case, and Mike, uh, excuse me, uh, Pow Pow and Witcher did a nice job keeping the lineman off so that Gibbons could make the tackle. So again, Strelzik is in to punt. This one again low, fielded by Woodard at the 40. He's coming right. Then he hesitates, gets a block. Now he's kind of pinned, screw, screw, moves out of it, and then gets forced out of bounds. And there's a late flag coming in, and I don't know if it's a late hit out of bounds because that's usually what happens on a late flag like that. Woodard's down at the 46, I believe, is where they spotted him, the Hornet 46, so a gain of about 14 yards on the 30-yard punt, 31-yard punt. But we'll have to wait and see what the flag is as our referee tonight is checking with Larry Hill what he wants to do, but I don't think he really has a choice. Indication is? I think it's against the Rangers. Oh, okay. Yeah, personal foul. Yeah. I, you know, you know Dead ball, about, personal foul, yeah. They, they really pride themselves on their special teams, and that's a little odd. Uh, there was just a late hit, late block outside the outside the. Uh, when, it, when the, the play was blown dead, there was a block, and that's just not necessary. So the Rangers, instead of being in Hornet territory, will be back at their own 39. Still good field position from their 39, but not as good as it could have been. Two receivers out to the left. Tandem of back, one on either side of Williams. It's a fake sweep right, the pass out to or Delzel Hunter, and he'll go for almost 10 yards. They'll spot him up at midfield. It'll be a first down on an 11-yard gain. The Dorzel Hunter with his seventh reception of the year. It's a first down for the Rangers. Nothing fancy there. Just fake the handoff and hit the open inside receiver. They were man up on the outside with Thompson and Pena. So now a single receiver. Tailback gets the ball up the middle. Nice gain. Like Franco again with about six yards up to the 44 of East Central. Nice job defensively. No, give, give the credit of the tackle to Allen Dukes. Typically in a situation like this, we have four wide receivers, one back. They're going to try to throw the football because they're ahead of the change, second and short. So in motion comes Cervantes. Williams wants to throw. He has a man down the middle. It's Pierce, and he overthrew him. Nice looking design as Pierce had beat the defensive back on the play. But uh, Williams 
And I don't know that he was hurried too much, just threw it a little too far. No, yeah, he just lost it. But that's pretty tra traditional. When you get second and short and you bring in the extra wide receiver, look for the pass. And that's what they did. So the Rangers now on third and four. Take some time as the play clock nears 10 seconds. Uh, it's uh, rebooted because of the, the length of the distance the players had to come back to the huddle. So the play clock now at 15 as they send two receivers right, three men in the backfield. One of them is Hunter. Williams wants to throw it out to the outside and throws it over the top of Rick, Ricky Rios. So for the second pass in a row, Levi Williams' arm strength has cost him some problems there. This time, if Ricky Rios was taller than his 5'11 frame, right. he might have had a chance, but probably would have had to be about 6'11 to catch it. Well, that was the exact same play they ran on first down, Tony, except this time Williams threw it just a little bit too high. Looks like he's throwing off his back leg more instead of planning and really driving off that back leg. He's throwing off of it. So a fourth and four, the Rangers are going to go for it. Williams to Franco. He gets hit. There's a flag in there, probably in the area of holding. Williams... I saw Franco is short on fourth down, so it would be East Central ball without the flag at their own 42. We'll see what the flag is and uh, what uh, the call will be. Looks like it is going to be holding. Yeah. Franco got hit right when he got to the line of scrimmage, so there uh, really wasn't a whole lot of chance that he was going to get free for a first down there. Well, I'll tell you what, 91, Jordan Shedrock did a nice job in those tackle for uh, the Hornets. He got such great penetration. He kind of blew up the whole play because he got back in the backfield so quickly. And that way, uh, Franco didn't really have a whole lot of choice except to shimmy by there and he only picked up a yard. So they'll turn it over on downs as the uh, penalty is declined. And East Central has the ball at their own 41-yard line. Two receivers come out to the left. There's a tight end right and a lone setback behind Oglesby and a, a wing, if you will, on the left side. Oglesby wants to throw. Quickly he does to the receiver that had a defensive back a long ways away. And again, it's good for a first down as the catch is made by Taylor Neal, a junior receiver. And that's his second catch of the season, and it's good for a first down. And that's that same play that they opened the game with. It's just a quick hitch to the inside receiver. If the defender is 12 yards off, they can do that all day long. You got to have, you have to come up and press that receiver and go man to man to take away that option. And we have said that this season, the Ranger defensive backs do not press cover very often. They do give some space, and they're doing it again here with two receivers to the right. Oglesby takes the snap, hands it to Lot, and he's bottled up. A lot of people moving their feet, but no one going anywhere. I think. Uh, Lot will get maybe back to the line of scrimmage, so it'll be second down and 10. Down at the bottom of that pile is someone we don't call his number a whole lot, number 35. That is Thomas Zoig, backup linebacker, a sophomore at 5'11", 180. Well, you have to keep the defense honest. That's why they're trying to run the football on first down. Make sure those linebackers are up tight so that when they do want to try to hit the uh, quick hitch pass, that they're that basically they can't get out for the uh, for the tackle. Oglesby wants to throw again. He has a man open in the flat as a nice catch is made. That is Taylor Neal again. He's pinned on the sideline, then thrown out of bounds. And Ethan Seal with the tackle bring up third and about five on the gain of about five yards on second down. Yeah, but we have to flag down. So hold the floor. Hold him in. Another flag. Let's see what the call is. The legal man downfield is the in initial indication. Look to me. Can't always see. Referees don't always give great mechanics, so you're not real sure all the time, but our referee is talking with Larry Hill nonstop right now, so I'm guessing it is against it is. I think Coach Hill, East Central. He's trying to determine should he just decline it and take the down because, uh, yeah. yeah eligible. So it is second yeah. down. They'll take the yards. Now 
now our referee has to go to the other side of the field and explain it <laughs> to Joe Hubbard the second year head coach of the Hornets. Hey what's the player's number that's what he's asking who was mm -hmm. downfield. That little quick hitch play that they've been throwing to the inside receiver has been working fairly well and especially if they're going to give them that that zone cushion off on the receivers. And I'll tell you, I, I just keep doing it until they adjust. The defense and adjust. that time is a little different. Instead of just going down the field, he did a little out route. Exactly. Kind of rubbed off the defender that the uh, outside guy went and ran up the field. Right. So they found something they like, but the penalty brings them back. It's second down and about 15 now from the 47-yard line. And your defense has been one of the strong suits of the team thus far. East Central is finding that out. Now a receiver to the left and two to the right. So they've taken the tight end off the field. Handoff going right to a backup fullback and gaining about 10 yards. One flag. And another flag. That's Damon Davis, who's one of the guys lining up in the slot. That time has run to the right side outside. and. Uh, and we'll have to see the flag and these officials are having way too many conferences as we played about almost seven minutes in this first quarter and that has to be at least the fourth or fifth penalty flag that we've seen at this rate uh, they're going to have a sore arm from throwing their <laughs> flags by the end of this game. I'll tell you what I see as an officiating crew they're very unsure about what they're doing. They're yeah they way, just wave. way too many wave conversations off. they're waving the flag off so it's a. Uh, a run of about eight yards for Davis. Bring up third and eight from the Ranger 46 yard line. Huddle up again as they wait for the call from the sideline. Smith Valley will probably stay in their zone, zone defense in the secondary. But you just can't give them a whole lot of cushion because they're gonna hit that. You know, they lined up. Here's a slot down here to the short side of the field. Here we go. They had one second left on the play clock. And they on called, the game clock, excuse and me. They, and on the play clock, you were right. So they call a timeout. Does East Central will take it with them? The Rangers lead at six to nothing. The Rangers or the uh, Hornets trying to find their way right now and not having a whole lot of luck with it. Hello, I'm Steve from GVTC, here to install your one gig per second internet service. Hey! You're Ranger Senior Trayvon Merrick Woodard. No, sir, I'm Steve with GVTC. Come on. Cornerback, kick punt return, wide receiver. I'll be over here. I'll let you know if I need anything. Set up your Wi-Fi. Thanks, Steve. So this is it, huh? Yep. This is where it all starts and finishes. Joe Pavelic, Jeff Shin, Alan Hill, Pat Bailey, Matt Hilson, Clint Haney, Cody Fuller, Eric Anders, Garrett Smith, Andrew Sandejo, Josh Adkins could have dressed in the soccer. We got work to do, kid. We're going to go inside. We're going to go outside. We're going to get him on the run. We're going to keep him on the run. Then we're going to go, 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 go. We won't stop until we're going to go line. This is a team they say is good. Well, I think we're better than them. So what do you say, man? Let me give it a try. Making videos is not easy. It's confusing and it's hard work. Well, I'm here to tell you, when your back's against the wall, call WIC Productions. It's who we use for game night scoreboard production and the Rangers Network. Amazing, Coach. 
another perfectly executed shameless plug. As we're back to Ranger Stadium, the Rangers lead at six to nothing. 4:44 to go in the first quarter. The situation is it's third down and eight to go for the Hornets as they've ventured into uh, the Rangers' side of the field. They're at the 46-yard line. Sophomore quarterback Charles Oglesby got the assistance of his head coach there with the timeout as the play clock running down. Now with a couple receivers right, he'll fake a handoff and then throw it to the inside receiver. He won't get enough for a first down, though he catches the ball near the 46-yard line. It'll be fourth down and three as the Rangers rallied to that one quickly. Keeler in on the tackle. And it'll be fourth down, and it looks like the Hornets want to go for it. They're going to go for it. I mean, why not? You have everything to gain, nothing to lose, and everything to gain by going four downs on every series. So fourth and three from the 41. They'll send two receivers to the left. They've got a... Lone setback. Rangers forcing the issue with everybody up. Oglesby wants to throw. He'll throw it over the top, and there's a hold of the jersey by Mason Pierce, and the flag will come in, so that'll be pass interference. As it looked like that time, Adrian Zapata just flew up the left sideline, and Pierce got beat, reached out, and grabbed his jersey, yeah. and that's the penalty. Well, there was no way that that pass was going to be completed. Oglesby just basically just threw it up in the air. And Zapata was trying to run underneath it, but with, with, the, uh, with the defender grabbing his jersey, there's no way he's even going to get close. That's an automatic penalty. Unfortunately, Mason Pierce has no idea whether that's a catchable ball or not when he turns and sees the guy going past him. I know one thing he didn't want to happen would be a long touchdown pass, and the penalty at least gives you a chance to go back and play defense. They teach you to grab, I guess. Once you get beat, grab. Maybe you get away with it. Typically, you do not. Most of the time, you don't get away with it. <laughs> that is correct. So, as the play clock nears 15, the game clock goes under four minutes to go. Here come the Hornets again from the Rangers' 31-yard line. Oglesby looks to the sideline again as the play clock nears five. Now gets ready. The snap comes. Fakes it to Lott, gets some pressure, throws it up, and it goes out of bounds. No one was going to catch that one. Is I think they actually called the play dead. There was an illegal procedure on the left side, Tony. Good call. Good job by Pow Pow getting in there and putting pressure on him. Did you hear the whistle? I did. Okay. I did. Yeah, the far line judge, he's the one who threw his flag. There was movement somewhere up along the left side, either Ramirez uh, or Martinez. Just moved just enough before the, play, before the ball snapped. So the loss of five yards makes it first and 15 from the Rangers, 36. First and 14 and 36. You know, you, you think that the Hornets have had the ball a lot, and yet we've barely played eight minutes. And they might have... I guess I could look, 26 yards. Here's Oglesby on the run, left side, gets brought down by Zuber after a gain of about five back to the original line of scrimmage at the 31. We haven't seen him run yet tonight, and we know he does run a lot, Jeff, so uh, probably a good time just to change it up. That time it looked like it was almost like an option read play. He could either throw the football or Keep it and run. That's the time he said he just kept it and run because the defensive end came upfield. He could dip underneath, and that's what he tried to do. Didn't seem to remember them huddling a lot last year, but they are huddling this year. Play clock is going to run out again. Did he call another timeout? He did. Yeah, did. Coach Joe Hubbard forced to call his second timeout of the first quarter because the play clock was winding down. We'll keep this one here as we do expect it to not be a long timeout, but this is a, a, a program. Uh, Hubbard in his second year came from the Dallas area. His record is 1-13 and 13 and 0 and 8 in district. And, and a first-year head coach with a program that's been struggling, you couldn't put him in a much worse district to try to turn things around. 
out of all districts, really, this is where you want to be. No, right. not really. But you know what? It, whenever you're establishing a team, you have to establish the culture. You have to change things around. And, I, and it's a long process. It doesn't happen in one year or two years. It's really a long process. And so I think that the, uh, the school district wants to give Coach Hubbard enough time so he can build a culture, a, a winning culture with the football program. And it's about changing the kids' lives, just not just on the field, but off the field, too. And he's a good coach. There is no doubt about that. He's just run into a buzzsaw of teams. They've played one game this season where they had a chance in Victoria, but uh, everything else has been a rough go. Now, it is second and 10 from the Ranger 31. Three receivers, one to the left, two to the right. Kind of a broken eye. Oglesby wants to throw over the top, has a man and overthrows him, but that's Mason Pierce who goes out and stretches out at the goal line and comes up with an interception. An interception for Mason Pierce. It's his second of the season and his seventh in the last two seasons. The junior with a nice play, like a receiver, to stretch out and make the play. Well, you know, the receiver had inside position, right. and Oglesby just misread it. I mean, he just threw it over his back shoulder, and, of course, Pierce is right there covering him, and it's a nice pass and catch for the, for the defender. It was Zapata who ran past Pierce on that earlier play that the interference was called. Zapata, as you mentioned, kind of cut to the post, and the throw was uh, just overthrown. So the Rangers will start first and 10 from their 20. Williams wants to throw it, throws it out to Woodard. Has one man to beat. Finally, pursuit comes and catches him, but not until he gets out near the 30. Just short, uh, and I will say it's a first down at the 30-yard line. A nice pass and catch to the senior receiver. That's such an effective play. When you think about it, it's like a long handoff because you get it to your playmaker, Woodard, and he's out here on the edge. And that way he can go one-on-one -on -one with one defender and you have the inside receiver going downfield and blocking for you. It's a, it's a really good looking play. Indeed. Playmakers all around for the Rangers right now. 4-0 and on the season. East Central 0-4. Three receivers to the left. One of them uncovered. Now out to the back. That is a backup receiver for the Rangers. It is Chris Rivera, one of the speedsters, the junior, had three receivers blocking in front of him as he was in the backfield, and uh, Levi Williams just overthrew him. You know, it, yeah, if, if Rivera would have been able to catch that football, you already mentioned three blockers on three, on three defenders, it would have been nothing but real estate to the end zone for him. So the Rangers had to play the way they wanted. They just didn't execute it. Levi Williams, who uh, has played remarkably this season, has too much energy tonight because that's the third pass he's overthrown here in the first quarter. They'll give it to, well, they'll fake it to Franco. Now across the middle, it's Woodard. He gets hit as he catches it, but up the field, a nice gain of almost 28 yards to the 42-yard line of the Hornets. A nice pass and catch to the senior receiver from the junior quarterback. When you have someone that, that is that talented, just give him the football. You split, Woodard split out far to the left. He ran a post pattern. Nice pass by, by Williams this time. Hit him right in stride. So the Rangers back to the line of scrimmage. Williams gives the handoff. It's Franco, beats one man, now breaks a tackle across the 30, across the 25 before he's dragged down on a nice run of almost 15 yards to the 24 by the junior running back, Mark Franco, now nearing 200 yards on the season. You know, that play was really set up by the two offensive, well, the offensive guard in the center, Alex Schaefer and Michael Hauser did a nice job of opening up a nice hole for, uh, for Franco to run through. Two receivers left, two to the right. Williams looks back to the sideline as the play clock nears 10 seconds. Changes something, then he barks it out to the offensive line. Everybody stays where they were. Williams takes the snap. He wants to throw it. No one's open, so he'll pull it down and run and gets to the line of scrimmage before they say forward momentum was stopped even though the huddle kept going. On a quick whistle, give him a gain of a yard to the 23. Well, he tried to hit that. Uh, Williams wanted to hit the inside receiver. And basically that time is defended very well. They went man to man on the receivers, not zone. And so they came up quickly. Williams had nowhere to go just to eat it. On the short side of the field, kind of a bunch of players there. That was uh, a tough look. Now two receivers, one to either side, but both in tight. They'll give it to Franco up the middle, a big hole. He got 
And there comes a flag. He'll get momentum up to about the 15, the 16 maybe. Uh, but I think it's coming back as they call it on the Rangers. That's too bad because 72 Michael Hauser just did an outstanding job driving his men back five yards. Just it's almost like, uh, you, you know, we used to call them it was almost pancake blocks. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It was almost an identical uh, pancake block. But he did a marvelous job of pushing his men out that gave Franco all that all that real estate to run on. So instead of third and short, it's now second and long as the ball has walked all the way back to the 34 yard line. And they need to get to the 14, so it is second and 20 from the 34 for the Rangers. Tight end to the right, two receivers, one either way. Two backs in the backfield. They'll fake it to Franco. Cervantes to block. Williams rolling right, throws it. Tough catch for Hunter as he's diving out of bounds. No contact made. It's incomplete. Uh, a nice design play for a good gain, just the throw and catch weren't comparable. And if you're, if you're a Hornet fan, this is a big down and distance. You have the Rangers backed up to their own 35-yard line. If you hold them here, they may be just out of field goal range. So this might be a very big play for the Rangers. If they can just get it another 10 or 12 yards, they'll be in field goal range. Third and 20. The Rangers 0 for 1 on third down so far tonight. The Hornets 0 for 3. So Williams surveys the field, has three receivers to his left. Looking for one of them, he's going to scramble. There's a big pile of people around him. Now he'll be sacked, clear back inside, or near midfield, I should say. So on third and long, Williams unable to find anyone open as their defensive secondary does the job. And as the quarter comes to a close, the Rangers will have to punt when we come back. We'll take a timeout. The Rangers up 6 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. We're back after this timeout on the Ranger Network. Flimsy microwave bacon tastes. But Wendy's oven baked bacon tastes. Add it to fresh, never frozen beef, and you've got a junior bacon cheeseburger. A JBC with four nuggets, fries, and a drink is what makes Wendy's four for four so deliciously different. Where'd you get the taco? Smoky Mo's barbecue. I got the grab and go taco combo. Smoky Mo's, they have breakfast there? Tacos? To go. Smoky Mo's has breakfast? Yes, sir. Breakfast tacos, biscuits, and bowls to go. Now I know. Biscuits and tacos to go. To go? To go. Tacos to go. To go. Again, it's six to nothing as we're back to Ranger Stadium. The Rangers lead the Hornets of East Central, but uh, after the opening offensive play by the Rangers, a 54-yard touchdown pass from Williams to Rios. The extra point was mishandled. But as we come back to start the second quarter, the Rangers with fourth and forever have to punt from uh, the Hornets' 41-yard line. East Central has no one back. France Anderson is the punter. Let's see if he can pin him inside the 20-yard line. Good-looking kick, might have too much distance. It'll land about the 10 if the Rangers get there, and it does slow down on the bounce. And they'll say it goes down at the one. A great job of coverage there. Trey Witcher is the man who touched it at the one-yard line. My concern was it looked like he ran into the end zone and then came back, and I know those rules have been changed lately, but uh, the Hornets will start from inside the one-yard line. We couldn't ask for a better punt. I mean. That last series for Smithson Valley didn't look typical Smithson Valley. They were misfiring. They weren't taking care of the football. They got sacked. It just wasn't traditional. But I tell you what, that punt looked very traditional with, with the special teams here for the Rangers. Let's talk a minute about that. If the sure. offensive lineman gets called twice, the offensive line got called twice for right. holding, is it because the defenders aren't where they're supposed to be, or are they just playing hard enough that you have to hold? What you know, are you, or is are you mentally? Unstrong. <laughs> Unstrong. I, I think I think it really boils down to is just technique. Yeah. You know, work your technique, do what you're supposed to do and what you've been coached to do, and just do it. It doesn't mean that the other player is that much better and you have to hold. Sometimes you do, but in this situation you didn't. Play clock ran out again on East Central. Coming out of a, a change after a punt. The play clock ran out again, so half the distance to the goal would be they were an inch away from the goal. Now they're a half inch away from the goal. 
So anyway, from the goal line, Oglesby has a receiver to the left. They'll give it to Lott up the middle. Has some room out to about the five before he's hit to the ground. So Woodard comes up with another tackle, and uh, Trayvon's tackle numbers have started to really grow as he's made a lot of plays in recent games. 11 tackles on the season, but six of them unassisted so far. That means he's been making some great plays, breaking down and, and getting yeah, a stop when necessary. You typically don't want your safeties and corners, though, being the leader in tackles. That means that they're <laughs> that means the other team's getting back and making good plays. So second down and about six from the five. Here's Oglesby keeping it himself on a designed run, but the defensive line and linebackers do a good enough job of slowing him down. They'll give him credit up to the six. Brady Chubb got his uh, foot stepped on or something. He's trying to shake it off, but a short gain makes it third down and five. Well, right now you want to do that double barrel blitz that, that the Rangers typically do in this situation. They want to get maximum pressure on the quarterback. Both outside linebackers will come blitzing through. They usually do get pressure to see if they do it this down. So third and about five from the six yard line. Oglesby sends two receivers to the left. There's a slot back and a single tailback. He wants to throw to the left, has a man open, and he overthrows him. Pierce given quite a cushion there to the receiver, which is Adrian Zapata, their speedster. And it goes incomplete, and uh, the Hornets will have to punt on fourth and six, or fourth and five, I should say. Well, good job by the Ranger defense. Uh, they'll be able to get good field position right now, flipping the field position from the first quarter to now that starting in the second quarter, you couldn't ask for a better field position right here. They're probably going to get the ball around the 35. Strelzik, the punter, Woodard deep. He's at the Hornet 36 right now, so they're not expecting a long punt. Strelzik, this one's high, but doesn't go very far. Woodard will fair catch it at the 35 with Hornets all around him, and the Rangers will start out from great field position at the Hornets 35. First and 10 to go with 10-18 left in the second quarter, and the Rangers leading it 6 to nothing. All right, second quarter, first offensive series in the second quarter. You're ahead six to nothing. You have great field position at the 35. This is where, if you're on the offensive team like the Rangers on offense right now, you want to make a statement in the game. Go in, score, get seven points on the board, and start taking control of the football game. Because right now it's still a toss-up. No one's really doing a whole lot. Let's start imposing our will. Yeah, you Larry, said it better than I would. Larry Hill would say. Here's a handoff. This is another tip that we haven't seen very much this year. Greg Eggleston, and he'll get a couple of yards inside the 35 up to the 31. A gain of about three brings up second and seven for he's wiggled down to the ground by a couple of Hornet defenders. Pretty nice block that time by 74 John Bauer and Jesse Clinton, 76, the offensive left guard and tackle. Nice job. So Eggleston is in at tailback. Now a tight formation with a tight end either way. Woodard in motion. He'll give it on a jet sweep coming left. Short side of the field. Tiptoes inside, then wiggles away. Breaks it to a tackle and now finally brought down, but not until he gets a first down near the 20-yard line. No one but Trayvon Merrick Woodard can do that, but he gets to the sideline and his feet are just so nifty. He avoids tacklers on the sideline all at once and gets a nice gain for a first down. I think that's the trademark offensive play, that jet sweep. And they give it to someone like Ricky Rios or Woodard. By the time they get the ball, they're already at almost full speed running. So it's a very effective play. Two receivers right, two setbacks either side of Williams. Here's a handoff coming this way. It looks like this is Franco who breaks a tackle and stays in bounds. Gets a couple of yards up to about the 16. So a gain of three brings up second and seven. As it, was, it wasn't an easy three yards either. He had to bounce off of two or three tacklers, but the sign of a good running back is always not what you do uh, when you don't get tackled, but when, after you make contact with a defender, what do you do after that? And that time, uh, Franklin did a nice job picking up three yards when he did, had nothing. So Eggleston back at tailback now with two receivers broke to the right. Hunter's a slot on the right side. They'll run up the middle. It is Eggleston. Wiggles away from one, then gets hit and spins away. He's got the ball inside the 10 before he's wrestled to the ground. 
Jonathan Acosta, the Sam linebacker in there to put the biggest hit on him. But Eggleston looked really shifty that time. His first down gets him inside the 10. Nice down block by Michael Heiser, the right, the right guard, and Ronald Copeny. Copeny, excuse me, the right tackle. They basically caved down the left, hand, the left side of the defensive front line, and there's nothing but uh, uh, an open pass for the, for the ball carrier. Now the jet sweep is Mason Pierce, who has a couple of touchdowns doing this, and hits the pylon, I believe. I think he's in for a touchdown, and he is. And the Rangers are on the board again. Jet sweep into the short side of the field, and that time it was all speed and execution, and the young man doing it on his own. Mason Pierce has two touchdown rushes coming in on six carries. On his seventh carry of the season, he gets his third touchdown, an eight-yard run over the left side, and the Rangers up 12 to nothing with the extra point to come. Mason Reed kicks it up, and it is through the uprights. The Rangers are on top, 13 to nothing. Their first drive of the second quarter is good enough for a touchdown. Listening to Ranger football on the Ranger Network. It's time for football, and Red McCombs Ford is powering the Rangers to another successful season. So go Rangers, and good luck from Red McCombs Ford, the truck capital of Texas, and SAFord.com, where you'll always shop over 1,000 vehicles, including the largest certified pre-owned inventory in all of Texas. Red McCombs Ford, the Rangers one-stop place to shop for new, pre-owned, fleet, and quick lane service. Go Rangers. So the Rangers go up 13 to nothing, eight minutes to go in the second quarter. We couldn't have drawn up a better situation with a short field starting the second quarter. Get your back, offense back out on the field and run going for the touchdown for seven points. Kind of take control of the game again. You know, right, the whole first quarter, you know who had control of the game. Five plays, 35 yards. The drive took two minutes and 18 seconds for the Rangers, who again lead it 13 to nothing. Reed will kick off, going right to left. Two backs deep. This one, high arching kick. Will hit the ground at the 15, fielded by Davis. He'll come to the right, but not get very far before kick coverage will pin him in just across the 15 at the 17. And that's where the Hornets will start first and 10. Ranger kick coverage again, doing a great job this season. A bunch of players in on the play including number 47, that's Zarrett, uh, Jarrett Zillman, as he's been in on a lot of defense in the last couple of games, and Ethan Sill, a defensive back. Excellent, excellent uh, execution on the kickoff team. No one getting out of the lanes and going down and breaking up, break it down before the ball carrier gets to him. And you had four or five Rangers on the tackle. So the Hornets start with a back either side. It is Oglesby who wants to run up the middle, and he's bumped down just across the 20, falls ahead near the 25. A nice gain of about six yards to the 24. Brings up second down and four. They went into that 11 personnel, and it's just basically a, 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 an option play where Oglesby takes the football if he sees an opening, goes right off his off the offensive left guard and gets enough for, well, what, seven yards on that game. So a good looking run by Oglesby. He came into the game with 35 yards on 15 carries, about two and a half yards a carry. So a uh, running back either way, he'll keep it again. This time he breaks a tackle and squirts outside off left tackle before Brady Chubb comes up and wrestles him down, but not until he gets a first down out to the 31. It's first and 10 for the Hornets. Just a good hard run by, the, by Oglesby, six feet, 205 pound sophomore, but he looks a lot bigger like that in person, does he not? He does. And, and let's just focus on it as we near the midway point of the second quarter. A couple of things that they felt they've done well offensively is some quick passes to receivers who are relatively uncovered. And now he's run a couple of times with uh, some energy behind it. You're seeing a little bit of rhythm. They're getting a the rhythm on offense. So first and 10 from the Ranger or from the uh, Hornet 31. He wants to throw it wide and overthrows it again. So. Something we've noticed tonight, both quarterbacks are maybe almost too keyed up, although we're far enough into the game that shouldn't matter. This is the second time in as many passes that Oglesby has thrown it over the top of his receiver. Well, give credit this time to number 40, C.J. Keeler. He put the pressure on Oglesby that time where he had to throw it a little high, 
And this time it was way high, but uh, he had a lot of pressure from Keeler getting in the backfield. So the Rangers set up for second down and 10. Two receivers for the Hornets go to the left, one to the right. There are two backs in the backfield, kind of a broken eye. Oglesby wants to run, has a block. It is Keeler that gets in there and grabs his jersey and kind of wrestles him down as more Rangers come in to clean it up. It'll be a loss of two back to the 29. It's third down and 12. Well, that time Keeler was, went in the backfield free because the outside linebacker, um, Cullen Munchberger, came in on a blitz, so the offensive tackle had to pick up the blitzing linebacker, and it left Keeler wide open. So the situation is third and 12 for the Hornets. Two receivers break left, one to the right. Again, the broken eye alongside of Oglesby. He turned the handoff. The fake was to someone who wasn't there. The ball is completed out to the edge on a nice, nice catch by Jordan Perry, number three, but uh, it is just a short gain, only a couple of yards, and that brings up fourth and a long nine. Well, the Ranger defense rises to the occasion again, and now that's a punting situation. They'll get decent field position. Of course, with Woodard receiving a punt, he's gonna give you really good field position, I believe. Woodard is back at his own 38. Strelzik again, the punter, kind of takes it and takes a couple of steps. Now he's going to fake it. He's coming and he's got some room. If he can get to the 40, it's a first down, and he gets across the 40 to the 43 before he's wrestled out of bounds. Nice help came over from Eggleston, but uh, Strelzik saw a wide open right side of the field and does the fake for a first down. You know, is that really well executed that time on the fake punt, and you have your leading rusher, Blaze uh, Strelzik, as the punter, and he's the one with the ball under his arm. Yeah, that's that's a good looking play. They get up to his own 43 yard line where the Hornets, with 5'10 to go in the quarter, have it first and 10. So they come out, two receivers to the right. And there's a timeout as the play clock's going to go down again so another timeout by the Hornets it's a 13 to nothing lead for the Rangers and what's been kind of an ugly first half so far 506 left we're back with more after this timeout on the Ranger Network it's time for football and Red McCombs Ford is powering the Rangers to another successful season so go Rangers and good luck from Red McCombs Ford the truck capital of Texas and SAFord.com. Introducing Hut Rewards from Pizza Hut. Finally, a rewards program that gives you points toward free pizza with every dollar you spend online. And get unlimited double rewards through October 1st. Don't settle for a piece of the pie. Join Hut Rewards today and earn free pizza faster. That's why no one out pizzas the Hut. This time the Hornets come back in a hurry as we're back to action at Rangers Stadium. 13 to nothing. Rangers on top of the Hornets of East Central. East Central with a first and 10 from their own 43. Oglesby, the quarterback, takes the stop. A three-step drop, has a man down the field. It's tipped and then incomplete. Looked like that was Johnson that got a hand on it first, intended for Zapata, who's all, all of a sudden become their most popular receiver because he's probably the fastest. But the ball, the ball falls incomplete, and it's second down and 10. That was a little strange. You had two, two wide receivers doing the same pattern, one in between the other. I think the ball was going to Zapata, but Pierce actually stuck his hand out and tapped it away. So two receivers to the right. Hand off to Lott. He's got a couple of yards across the 45 and 47. It'll be a gain of four before he's wrestled down by Zuber. So it'll be third down and about six. Not a favorable down and distance that we've seen so far by the Hornets. And offensively, this is a tough call. I would agree with you there. They're 0 for 5 on third down. This is third and about 5 from the 47, their own 47. Oglesby fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, has to break one tackle and can't as he squirms up to about the 50, maybe the Ranger 49. Zuber had him and wouldn't let him go. And it'll be fourth and about 3 from the Ranger 49. You'd think they'd try to faint punt if they've already done that this quarter, so you can't do it again. This is this would be prime real estate though that right on right on the 50 yard line you'd want to do a fake punt. But. And let me just, will the yeah. Ranger defense be ready for it this time? They might if be a, yeah. 
the element of surprise just might, might not be there. They've got nobody blocking on the uh, left side of the offense, and they're going to throw a fake, and it is almost caught. Is it caught? Did he hang on to it? He no. Did. It goes incomplete. Intended for their tight end, Tanner McKay. The, Ray, the uh, Hornets really rolling the dice in this one, and I don't know that I blame them because he had a chance to catch it with a defender on him. You know, and take my last comment back, obviously. <laughs> it actually was a pretty good pass. It was. But uh, McKay just wasn't able to haul it in for the, uh, for the big catch. Strelzik uh, has proven that he is probably their most, uh, most important offensive player because he's done more for sure tonight. So Williams comes out with a receiver either way. The Rangers first and 10 from the 49-yard line. Williams wants to throw out to the edge. It's Rios and makes a nice catch and then tries to get past the defender but can't. So the catch will be about eight yards. A nice stop on the play by the cornerback Evian Thompson, the junior at 5'10 and 180. But the gain of eight makes it second and two. I think that should be automatic. If you have Ricky Rios one-on-one -on -one with the corner, I think that's a pretty good play just to just to get the football and try to get get him a pass. You know, just get get his hands on the ball. Rios to the right, Woodard to the left. They'll fake Woodard in motion, and Franco takes it right up the middle. Gets a first down and then some up to the 36 before he smashes into the safety. The gain by Franco will be enough for a first down at the 36-yard line. The safety. Alan Duke's kind of feeling that one right now. You know, the Hornets traditionally are in a 34 defense, but tonight they're in an even front four-man defense. Williams wants to throw, has a man down the right sideline. It is Woodard who turns and makes a beautiful catch using his body to block off the, the, the defensive back, Pena. And it's a touchdown from Williams to Woodard that covers 36 yards. And the Rangers are up 19 with the extra point to come. You nailed it. A nice pass to the back shoulder of Woodard, who adjusted his route, turned his body, torched it a little bit. Nice pass, nice catch. Two yards, two yard run into the end zone. Just a beautiful looking play. Mason Reed will come on for the extra point with 2.37 to go in the first half. Snap is good, the hold is down, the kick looks good, and it's through the uprights, and the Rangers go up 20 to nothing on the Hornets of East Central as we've got just a minute, uh, two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. We'll take a timeout on the Ranger Network with the Rangers up 20 to nothing. It's really great to be part of this wonderful community. Smithson Valley is about friends, family, and taking good care of one another. And at Ferris Orthodontics, we believe in the same thing. Our new patients are referred to us by friends. We treat everyone like family, and we will take care of you by giving you a healthy smile. Ferris Orthodontics. Line them up. Flimsy microwave bacon tastes. But Wendy's oven baked bacon tastes. Add it to fresh, never frozen beef, and you've got a Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. A JBC with four nuggets, fries, and a drink is what makes Wendy's 4 for 4 so deliciously different. Davis and Rosemont are back for the Hornets as we're back to Rangers Stadium. The Rangers lead it 20 to nothing. We've got 2.37 to go here in the first half as the Rangers have scored on their last two possessions. They scored on their first possession of the game and then had a couple of them that didn't result, result in touchdowns, and now they have. The kick by Reed is short, fielded by an up man who brings it up the right side, up the hash, gets hit about the 30, and that's as far as he'll go. Let's see who it was. Someone who doesn't normally return kicks. It is Neal, who we've seen as a receiver tonight. He'll get out to about the 30, where the Hornets will start first and 10. Kick coverage not too bad on a short kickoff. Yeah, it's a short kickoff. Sometimes it's hard as he's going down on the uh, on the kickoff to be able to adjust to that. Number 50, Jordan Johnson, is a backup linebacker. He did a nice job, though, making the tackle on that play. So the Ranger defense, with two and a half minutes to go, needs a big stop here as they lead it 20 to nothing. Play clock, plenty of time to go as the Hornets are out in their offensive set. Two receivers left. Oglesby keeps it after a fake of a handoff and 
That's another Ranger in the backfield ready to wrap him up. Is it? Looks like Zillman, isn't it? Zillman now. So it's not Zuber who's been there a bunch. <laughs> Zilman, nice play, just working off the block, scraping in and making a nice stop for a loss of, two, of one yard. Zilman, a backup uh, defensive end as there's a timeout on the field. Do the Rangers call this one? I know it's not the two minute warning because we're in high school. <laughs> I guess they did. Well, I don't think they have any timeout, so it has to be a Ranger timeout. We'll take it with them as the Rangers lead it 20 to nothing here on the Ranger Network. When you're ready for a break, hurry in to Chicken Express. Let us do all the cooking for you. We always offer high quality, affordable meals that the entire family will enjoy. Our chicken is never frozen and it's hand battered fresh so you can really taste the difference. You can expect fast and friendly service at Chicken Express whether you dine in, drive through, or drive up. Hurry in and hurry back to Chicken Express. So we're back to Ranger Stadium. It's second and long. Oglesby wants to keep it. He'll get maybe a yard, maybe two as he crosses the 30 yard line and the Rangers are going to use another timeout, maybe trying to get another possession here in the first half yep. as we'll keep it here on this one. Keeler in on the tackle of Oglesby who gets up to about the 31. It'll be third down and nine after this timeout. But uh, Jeff, this yep. is, uh, you kind of figure you just scored. In fact, you scored on your last two possessions. Larry Hill wanting to put an end to this, any discussion of this still being a game and trying to get another possession here. I think that's a strategy, obviously. He's going to have enough time to put together something on offense because, it, you know, when you think about it, you always want to eliminate the big explosive plays, but that's kind of the forte of the Ranger offense. I mean, they like to move the ball down methodically, yes, but they've got such big playmakers. They can throw it 30 yards down the field and score on it. That's what you do when, once you have the football after. And, um, you know, I guarantee you that's what Coach Hill is thinking of at this time. You know, I did want to comment on Keeter that last play. The offensive, the offensive tackle, Martinez, had a hold of his jersey. It was holding big time. Even I saw it up here. And he still went and made the tackle. So on third and long, with 2.18 to go in the half, Oglesby sends two receivers right and one to the left, has a lone setback beside him as he surveys the defense. Play clock at 15 as he takes the snap, goes back, wants to throw back to the guy in the backfield, and after avoiding one tackler, gets stood up near the sideline, and we'll see if the ball, the ball stayed in bounds, so I don't know if the Rangers will call another timeout as the play clock would go to about 120 on fourth down. We'll see how quick everything happens. The uh, Hornet punt team comes on. The punt receiving team comes on for the Rangers. Play clock at 15, a minute 45 to go. Hill, Coach Hill will keep one timeout in his pocket as the defense is quite aware of the potential of a fake. No, they did have one more timeout left, I guess. Well, the Hornets just called a timeout. Well, they've called three, though. That's, and see, the, the back and judge is now telling the referee, no, that's you can't do that. He's already used up all of his he's, timeouts. He's used his three timeouts. Yeah. So a flag comes out. We'll see. He'll be penalized. Yeah, they're saying he doesn't have any timeouts. But he got a timeout anyway. He got his team over there huddled and had a conversation. Why is the clock still running? Now, that doesn't make any sense that they there's a penalty. Now, the clock needs to go back to at least a minute 32. Well, the referees now, I think that's what he's trying to do. I'm not real sure. Did the referee start the clock? Because he shouldn't have. The play clock, yes. Right, but not, not the, the game, game clock, yeah, game yes. Clock, exactly. This is when you need the referee needs a mic. Yes. Him, you know, so he can communicate with the press box up here. One, 132 is what it was, and that's where we're back. So the punt Got will it. come off at 132. Woodard is deep at his own 40. Strelzik has averaged right around 30 yards per punt, and he'll go back in punt formation. A 
Like they have all day long. They send someone in motion. Strelzik will kick it this time. Not oh, a good man. kick at all. Almost straight up. It'll angle out of bounds. It gets a great bounce on the sideline and goes out of bounds somewhere near the 35-yard line of the Rangers. They'll mark it at the 32, and with a minute 24 to go in the half, that's where the Rangers will have the ball. And I'm guessing... I'm guessing Larry Hill expected to get better field position than that. Yeah, even with the penalty, it was a decent kick because he got a, a nice um, hornet roll on it. Well, it wasn't um, a good kick, but it did get it, a good, good roll. roll. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, you, they're still going to go for it. I mean, you, you will put another seven points on the board here at the end of the first half. Kind of, kind of put the lasting statement on because the Rangers do get the football first to start the second. That half. is correct. Two receivers right, one to the left. Williams straight drop back, short drop. Has a man open, wow. doesn't throw it, pulls it down, wants to run, gets tackled right short of the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 11. They'll have to huddle up in a hurry as the game clock goes to a minute 10. That was pretty much a secondary sack that time. He, you know, he had Hunter open. open. Yeah, he had Hunter open near the 40-yard line. Now he wants to throw it out wide. It's, it's the tailback, Franco. He'll be pushed out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Hunter out in front blocking for him. A gain of about eight up to the 40-yard line. And that'll bring up a third down and three with the clock stop. 59 seconds to go. I'm not sure the the distance of the field goal kicker. Do you know, Tony? Because maybe they're trying to get just a position to kick yeah, the field Yeah, about goal. 40 yards. So they'd have yeah. to get uh, inside the 25 to have any chance. And... The wind seems to be blowing against him right now. I don't know what the discussion's about. So the clock is stopped with 59 seconds to go. They start the play clock. Rangers are up to the line in a hurry. Williams has two receivers right, one to the left. Franco, the tailback behind him. He looks, has a man open, throws it late. It is knocked away as Rios, the intended receiver, the defensive back, looked to be uh, uh, Efren Dominguez, one of the backups. But he uh, got a hand on it there, and it's fourth down, and the Rangers will have to punt with 54 seconds to go. So the try to make something happen doesn't work. We'll see now if they might want to fake one here with 54 seconds to go. France Anderson, the punter. I wouldn't think so. They're just trying to control this game at this point. Get in the, get in the locker room for halftime. Anderson's kick is a low end over end kick that hits inside the 40 but has a great Hornet bounce. Finally stopped at the 42. And with 42, 46 seconds to go. Hopefully this half will end. Well, both teams have just been swapping back and forth field position and you know, the Rangers have those big explosive plays. That's why they, they're up on the scoreboard. But East Central, they've had the opportunities with some decent field position to do something with it to see if they can do something here at the end of this first half. Not real sure what kind of chances they'll take. But they come out to run offense. Oglesby. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Straight drop back. Wants to throw it wide to the left. Reed, oh. It is uh, Ricky Pierce that comes up. Mason Pierce, pardon me, and tips the ball to himself and comes up with an interception. Mason Pierce, his second interception of the night. And the Rangers all of a sudden with 41 seconds to go have the ball again now in Hornet territory at the 40-yard line. Well, East Central tried to run that same little quick hitch to the inside slot receiver. This time, though, Pierce knew that they were going to do it. He made a great break, break on the ball, tipped it up in the air, and then caught the tip and by himself in midair. Good look. So we'll try this again. We did it with about a minute something to go. Now with 41 seconds, we're 20 yards further up the field. First and 10 from the 40 of the Hornets. Two receivers either side now. Franco, the lone setback behind Williams. Williams drops straight back, throws it long, left side, has a man, it is Pierce, and it's a touchdown. Mason Pierce catches, after he gets the interception, catches the touchdown pass. For him, it is his first touchdown reception of the season. He has three of them carrying the ball, but this one is via the air, and the Rangers lead it 26 to zip. Just a beautiful, beautiful play. It was a fly route by Pierce down the short side of the field. 
Nice pass by, by Williams over his inside, I was outside shoulder. It was just perfectly executed. It all started with the front lineman doing a nice job because Lee, because uh, Williams had a lot of time to set his feet and throw the football. Mason Reed's extra point try hits the upright and goes awry. It is no good, so it remains 26 to nothing. The Rangers lead it with 34 seconds to go, and I'm telling you right now, the last two minutes of this half, two minutes and 28 seconds, has now taken 12 minutes, and that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> and we've had three different position changes, position changes, in other words, just going back and forth each team. <laughs> Goodness. Not fair. Rangers lead at 26 to nothing. Sometimes someone would say that's not fair. But with 34 seconds to go now, as that drive was a long, a long one. One play, 40 yards, six seconds. Davis and Rosemond go back to receive the kickoff of Mason Reed. Reed's kick. High, angles left. It is trying to see it from the horns. <laughs> it is Rosemont who breaks some tackles. He's got it out of the crowd. He's near midfield, has one man to beat, gets past him. He runs the sideline. There's a flag comes in late. He'll go into the end zone. But I believe there will be a block that is not allowed, and the flag will stop the kickoff return for a touchdown by D'Angelo Rosemont. Rosemont, I tell you, that was all on him because he had several Rangers ar try to arm tackle him back there at the 25 and 28 yard line, and he just broke through all of the arm tackles and ran got to the, side of the, uh, the near side of the field before he ran down into the end zone. So the kickoff return for a touchdown is not allowed. The flag thrown near the 27 yard line and another flag at the 43 I see now. So a couple of blocks were not of the legal variety. You know, there's always a rule when you're on kickoff team. If the ball carrier is in front of you, you don't need to block. You really don't need to block because the chances of you blocking the back or holding or doing something illegal is greater than if you're in front of the running back. And, and, and they always teach you, don't block behind the ball. And here, here's what I'm going to tell you. Every coach says that, and it still happens all the time. It happens every time. Yeah, exactly. You know, those flags were after Rosemond was already passed. So Oglesby will have offense from his own 47. He'll keep this one. Has some room up the middle before he's chased down from behind. Give him a gain of about five as the clock will roll out, and that will be the last play of the half because I don't think they'll be able to huddle up quick enough. We do count it down to 4-3-2-1, and that's the end of the half. The Rangers lead it 26 to nothing. Halftime is coming up, so we hope you stay with us here on the Ranger Network. It's really great to be part of this wonderful community. Smithson Valley is about friends, family, and taking good care of one another. And at Ferris Orthodontics, we believe in the same thing. Our new patients are referred to us by friends. We treat everyone like family and we will take care of you by giving you a healthy smile. Ferris Orthodontics. Line them up. When you're ready for a break, hurry in to Chicken Express. Let us do all the cooking for you. We always offer high quality, affordable meals that the entire family will enjoy. Our chicken is never frozen and it's hand battered fresh so you can really taste the difference. You can expect fast and friendly service at Chicken Express, whether you dine in, drive through, or drive up. Hurry in and hurry back to Chicken Express. It's homecoming at Smithson Valley, so we'll turn it over to the ceremonies on the field. The 2017 Smithson Valley Ranger homecoming boys. The freshman class is represented by the following. Duke Gabe Hoskins. Gabe is escorted this evening by his mother, Maria Hoskins. Duke, Jalen Nutt. Jalen is escorted by his parents, Jason and Shannon Nutt. Duke, 
Tristan Ortiz. Tristan is being escorted by his parents, Paul and Cindy Ortiz. Two, Elijah Soto. Elijah is being escorted by his parents, Chris and Jennifer Soto. Duchess, Brooke Carlson. Brooke is escorted this evening by her parents, Chris and Missy Carlson. Duchess, Nicole Warren. Nicole is escorted by her parents, Charles and Tammy Warren, and sister, Caitlin Warren. Duchess, Sarah Thorpe. Sarah is escorted this evening by her parents, David and Susan Thorpe. And Duchess, Carmen White. Carmen is being escorted by her parents, Carlton and Erica White. The sophomore class is represented by the following. Duke, Aiden Carlson. Aiden is escorted to TV by his mother, Marina Cruz Ramirez. Duke, Chandler Cole. Chandler, Chandler is escorted this evening by his parents, Chris and Lori Cole. Duke, Matt Franco. Matt is escorted this evening by his parents, Mark and Jill Franco. Duke, Jake May. Jake is being escorted by his parents, Jeff and Tiffany May. Duchess, Isis Avance. Isis is being escorted by her parents, by her mother, Aruna Avance. Duchess, Haley Cadena. Haley is being escorted this evening by her parents, Pat and Jenna Cadena. Duchess, Avery Rogers. Avery is escorted by parents, Sean and Brandy Rogers. Duchess Madison Suarez. Madison is escorted by her parents, Ronnie Suarez and Bernadette Galani. Our junior class is represented by the following students. Duke, Chase Carson. Chase is escorted this evening by his parents, Tamara and Carl Car Carson. Duke, Aaron Cruz. Aaron is escorted by his parents, Carlos and Jamie Cruz. Duke, Hudson Murphy. Hudson is being escorted by his father, Mike Murphy. Duke, Levi Williams. Levi, our Ranger quarterback, is represented on the field this evening by his parents, Todd and Sherry Williams. <laughs> Duchess, Kayla Cassidy. Kayla is escorted by her parents, Christy Cassidy and Jerry Navarro. <laughs> Duchess, Maddie Forbes. Maddie is being escorted by her parents, Jeff and Ronda Forbes. Duchess, Jesse Pope. Jesse is escorted this evening by her parents, Jared and Julie Pope. Duchess, Haley Rivers. Haley is escorted this evening by her parents, Mike and Kelly Rivers. And now for the senior class of 2018, which is represented by the following. Duke, Brady Chubb. Brady is also on 
Walker of Ranger Football, and it's being represented on the field by his parents, Brian and Lori Chubb. Duke, Ryan Hill. Ryan is another member of our varsity squad and is represented on the field by his parents, Chris Hill and Anna Stevens. Duke, CJ Keeler. CJ also plays football for SVHS and is represented this evening by his parents, Stephen Keeler and Kelly Ross. Duke, Bobby Palamy. Bobby, like all the other senior dudes, is also in the field house, so he is represented this evening by his parents, Robert and Olga Palamy. Duchess, Maddie Carlson. Maddie is escorted this evening by her father, Greg Carlson. Duchess, Mackie Foley. Mackie is escorted by her parents, Terry and Brenda Foley. Duchess, Corey Navarro. She is being escorted this evening by her parents, William and Lori Navarro. And Duchess, Maria Rocha. Maria is being escorted The winners are Prince Jalen Nutt and Princess Carmen White. For Prince and Princess of the Sophomore class, the winners are Prince Matt Franco and Princess. Madison Suarez. For Prince and Princess of the Junior Class, the winners are Prince, Aaron Cruz, and Princess, Maddie Four. The Prince and Princess of the Senior Class, the winners are Prince, CJ Keeler, and Princess, Mackie Foley. And finally, Smithson Valley's 2017 Homecoming King and Queen, chosen by the, their peers to represent them are King, Bobby Palomino, and Queen, Maria Rocha. When you're ready for a break, hurry in to Chicken Express. Let us do all the cooking for you. We always offer high quality, affordable meals that the entire family will enjoy. Our chicken is never frozen and it's hand battered fresh so you can really taste the difference. You can expect fast and friendly service at Chicken Express whether you dine in, drive through or drive up. 
Hurry in and hurry back to Chicken Express. It's really great to be part of this wonderful community. Smithson Valley is about friends, family, and taking good care of one another. And at Ferris Orthodontics, we believe in the same thing. Our new patients are referred to us by friends. We treat everyone like family, and we will take care of you by giving you a healthy smile. Ferris Orthodontics. Line them up. So the Rangers lead it 26 to nothing here at the break. And if for a little better execution, it could be even more, but we'll settle with 26 and see what we can do in the second half. The Rangers will receive the second half kickoff. And in just a few moments, we'll be ready with that. Be interesting to see how long or how soon execution starts out on a good note so that the backups can come out on the field soon. Like we discussed off off the air, Tony. You know, la last week was the hard focus, you know, hard fought game, and then you come into tonight's game against East Central. You feel like this shoot should be able to take control of the game from the very beginning and put some points on the board and let your backups play, but it hasn't been that easy, and they haven't executed very well the first half. So I imagine we'll see the starters and we'll see them for a little bit until Coach Hill feels satisfied. Satisfied. Who's and kick? it's a pop-up kick by Jordan Johnson, fielded by Woodard inside the 20. He breaks a tackle, now squirts to the right, now has some room on the right sideline as he races still with one man to go and gets caught from behind and wrestled down by a couple of guys, but not until he gets into Hornet territory near the 36-yard line where the Rangers will start first and 10 on a nice kick return by Woodard, who, oh, by the way, this season is averaging only 19 yards of return, but that's only the third time this season he's got a chance to return a kickoff. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you know what? He had to break two or three tackles. I don't think one defender cannot bring Woodard down. It takes a whole host of them to get that, that kid down. Would not argue with you there. So the Rangers will come out. Levi Williams, the junior signal caller. 8 of 13 for 196 yards in the first half. Has a receiver either way, but tight. Two backs behind him. The handoff to Franco. he get a few yards before he's wrestled down near the 30-yard line. So a gain of almost six. Brings up second down and four as the right side of the offensive line that time with Hausler and Copney. Did a good job of giving him some room. Also, uh, Diego Cervantes is in there at fullback. Uh, first play from the second half in the third quarter, they come out in 20 personnel, which means you have two backs, no tight ends, and three wide receivers, so they just run the football behind Cervantes. Two receivers left this time, two backs, one either side of Williams. Here comes Franco, has one man to beat, spins away from him, now catches the left corner, gets a block, then runs over a defender, breaks a tackle, stays in bounds, and gets across the 15-yard line before he is wrestled down by Eddie Bankston, a sophomore linebacker. But the Rangers have another first down. Yeah, that's that execution we were talking about at halftime, Tony. Like, how are, how are we going to perform? How are we supposed to execute each and every play? That time you had blocks all gone along the stream, down the line of scrimmage. Good job of executing that. Franco getting some good yards here at the opening parts. We've played almost a minute of the third quarter. Williams sees the field with two receivers right. Franco again up the middle, a play fake by Williams, but Franco gets inside the 10 as he carries a couple of defenders with him. Now wrestled down at the nine yard line, a couple of yards short of a first down. It's second down and two as the offensive line really starting to assert itself. Assert itself it is. They're just taking control of the defensive line of scrimmage, pushing them back five yards. Second down and three now. You know, Franco, if, when you watch him run, he's only 5'9", 190 pounds. He doesn't run like that. He, looks, he runs like he's a bigger man than that. It's a second and short from the nine. A man in motion. They'll give it to Franco up the middle. He gets a block, then spins away from a defender, wrestled down at the five. A gain of about four yards will bring up first down and goal. Damian Quick, the sophomore free safety. Brought him down, so first and goal from the five for the Rangers. Cervantes will come out. And Palamine comes in. Listed as a tight end, now kind of as a 
fullback blocker type. It's a jet, jet sweep fake and a pass in the flat. Hunter catches it for a touchdown. Levi Williams, another touchdown, his fourth touchdown pass of the night, his ninth of the season. And the Rangers score on their opening possession of the second half to go up 32 to nothing with the extra point to come. That's how you start the second half. Take control of the game, run the football effectively. When you're down there on the goal line, run a bootleg off the jet sweep. Williams has the option of either keeping it and running it in or throwing it this time to Hunter, number five in the end zone. Nixon Reed on with the extra point try. The snap good, the hold down, the kick is up and through the uprights. It's 33 to nothing. Just an interesting note because we're in a 33 to nothing game. The five yard touchdown pass was completed to number five, Adorzel Hunter, his second touchdown of the season. But it came on first down, so all the numbers didn't fit perfectly. But it is 30, <laughs> it is 33 to nothing, Good and try. the Rangers will kick off in just a moment. 9.48 to go in the third quarter. I think Coach Hill feels a little bit better now. Coming in, opening kickoff, marching down the field, taking control at the line of scrimmage, seeing his first unit really command and take control of the game, getting seven points on the board. You couldn't draw it up any better than that. Five plays, 36 yards. Two minutes, 12 seconds on that touchdown drive. Again, Williams, his fourth touchdown of the night and his ninth of the season. His passing yards over 200 for the night. Mason Reed will get ready to kick off again. We, we joked several times this season that there's not many kickers as busy as Mason Reed. <laughs> with extra points and kickoff chores as it seems like every game he has to kick off at least a half a dozen to a dozen times. I think he has to ice his leg down after all the times he has to kick. As he approaches and the end over end kick into the wind is short, fielded at the 22, but the Ranger kick coverage is down in a hurry like it was Davis who caught it and wrestled down near the 27 or 28 yard line where the Hornets will start first and 10. You know, Tony, those pooch kickoffs are real effective if you get a lot of air underneath the ball because that gives your coverage time, your team time to get down the field where the running back, once he gets it, he doesn't have a whole lot of opportunity to you know, pick and choose where he wants to run. So that was executed very effectively. Do you think it's a pooch or is that wind just strong enough that that's as far I, I as I think that's more of a pooch. Okay. I really do. Okay. Oglesby will have a receiver in motion. He'll fake it to him and give him to Lott in the backfield, but the Rangers are right there waiting for him. The defensive line of Smithson Valley has been, well, well, what I would say overwhelming tonight for the Hornets is they have been unable to block almost anyone in a blue jersey as all four defensive linemen and a linebacker or two was there to meet Lott as he took the handoff and actually lost a couple of yards. It's second down and 13. Well, they're taking advantage of two sophomore offensive linemen, Daniel Santillana and, and uh, Frankie Martinez, both sophomores and starting for the first time. And here's Lott up the right side, gets a couple of spaces wide, gets five, maybe six, seven yards up ahead to the 30. It's actually third down and nine now. Give him a gain of about five. Hmm, you think they're going to throw that little quick, quick hitch? <laughs> That's been their most effective pass play. Rangers send uh, some backups into the secondary here. Play clock at 15. Oglesby sends two receivers to the right. One of them has some cushion. We'll see what they do run. He'll drop straight back, sends a man over the middle. It's intercepted by Chubb at the 40, intended for Strelzik, but I'm not real sure. Well, I, I can tell you this specifically. Strelzik ran a very horrible route. He just kind of just kind of jogged into the middle of the field. Ogles, uh, Oglesby threw it to him, and he wasn't ready, and Chubb intercepted it. Tony had no way of, of really working because he only sent two receivers out, and, and you had both safeties back, the corner pressing from the outside in, and the linebacker coming right down the middle. I mean, there was no way to get the ball in there. Maybe Strelzik knew that when he ran the route because he, he was not sharp on it at all. The Rangers get the turnover and will go first and 10 from the Hornet 39. Williams will throw it to a back out of the backfield. It's Cervantes, but he gets nowhere as he's met, and there are flags all over the place now. A good tackle on the play by uh, Landon Byers, a senior linebacker. 
And I think they're going to call holding here on the outside. By Byers was trying to get by the blocker to make the tackle, which he did, but he was being held. So the Rangers will find themselves penalized again on first down. So now it'll be first in a long way. That is something that I find that, you know, they've had more penalties, uh, the Rangers, this game than, than I can recall. We actually games. had several in the steel game as you well, did? very okay. accustomed like. I'm not so sure that uh, East Central might want to turn this down. It was a loss of uh, six or seven yards. They declined it. So it is declined. It'll be second down. And let's see where they spot the ball. The official standing at the 43, 44 yard line. The loss of five will make it second and 15. Yeah, that's not a spot file there. So as the game clock rolls at 8.10 to go, Williams wants to pass, has a man wide open. That is. I can't see because his number's all jumbled up. Is it Ricky Rios? Ricky Rios. It is Rios. You can see the front number, but the back was tucked up under his uh, pads. So, well, so much for the penalty. The Rangers say, hey, Williams hits Rios, who made a move at about the 20 and lost his uh, defender. Williams just threw it high enough and far enough that Rios ran under it. It's another touchdown, 39 to nothing with the extra point to come. That play was successful by that formation. Double slots, wide, and, and basically Williams could just pick and choose who he wanted to uh, throw to. That time it was Ricky Williams all alone for a touchdown. So the 44-yard touchdown pass is followed by the extra point. And it's now 40 to nothing. The Rangers on top of East Central. This is the Ranger Network. Just press enter and your GBTC Home Home DVR will record your show automatically. Thanks, Doug from GBTC, who looks exactly like Ranger Senior CJ Keeler. I'm just Doug, here to help. Fumble! Here you go. Can I help you set up your favorite channel list now? Hello, I'm Steve from GVTC, here to install your one gig per second internet service. Hey, you're Ranger Senior Trayvon Merrick Woodard. No sir, I'm Steve, with GVTC. Come on, cornerback, kick punt return, wide receiver. I'll be over here, I'll let you know if I need anything. Wi-Fi. Thanks, Steve. Back to Ranger Stadium, 8.05 to go in the third quarter. The Rangers have scored twice here in the opening less than four minutes. Go from 26-0 to 40-0. A pair of touchdown passes by Williams, first to Hunter, the second one to Rios. Have given the Rangers 14 third quarter points. And we've not even got to the eight minute mark yet. So here comes Mason Reed again. And he'll put a toe to it. This end over end kick is again short, fielded by Davis at the 15. Has a little bit of room in front of him, has a couple of many beats. Now he's squirted loose, has only the kicker to beat, and Reed did a nice job of slowing him down so that he could be picked up by Jacob Johnson but not until Davis gets to the 37 yard line of Smithson Valley on a nice kickoff return. Yep, a little bit of a breakdown on the right hand side of the Rangers uh, kickoff team and uh, Davis took advantage of it, was able to squirt through, break one arm tackle and he had a lot of real estate to run in. 46 yards on the kickoff return. He's in Ranger territory now at the 39 is where they spot it. Oglesby hands it off to Lott, has a seam and finally knocked down by a, basically a, a shoulder or an arm tackle by Chubb. He acts like he's hurt now 
as he took a shot on that right shoulder. So Ethan Sill will come in to replace him. He did get Lott down, but not until he gained eight up to the 31. So Oglesby sent two receivers to the right. Gives it to Lott again. This time the defensive nice. line beats the tackle. That is Pow Pow who hit the first or made the first contact, and then several other Rangers were there. Yep. Pow -pow. Flores also. I was going to comment, Pow Pow really just blew the play up by getting great penetration, and then the Keeler comes in and kind of wipe it out after that. That's a good looking play by the defense. You know, right now the the defense for, for the Rangers is very base. They're four they're four three, they're playing zone. Nothing fancy. They're just getting great penetration by the front. Uh, front four. Third and th third and four. They'll give it to Davis. He'll wiggle around one tackler and gets up to about the 30. I think he's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Depends on the spot. As several Smithson Valley defenders were in there on the play. I think Chubb was down near the bottom of the pile and then a couple of linebackers, two in a defensive end. We're going to measure. No? Alex Flores. They say he's about a half yard shy at the 29 and a half. He needs to get to the 29 for a first down, and East Central will go for it. Six and a half to go in the third quarter. It's 40 to nothing, Smithson Valley. Oglesby sends two receivers to the right, one to the left. Takes the snap, gives it to the up back. No, he keeps it. Nice fake by Oglesby, and he'll get the first down before he's wrestled down by a whole host of defenders. Not until he gets to the 26. It's first and 10 for the Hornets. There you go. That play is nothing more than a quarterback sneak, except you're in a shotgun formation. So you basically fake the handoff and you run behind the running back who's your lead blocker. So in essence, it's just a quarterback sneak. Excellent description. It is, it is anything but a sneak, but it has the same principle. Yeah. I, I understand Bring what you're shotgun. saying completely. Yeah, it's just he's going right behind blockers. So first and 10 for the Hornets. A broken eye beside him. It's, he keeps thing. it again. There's a flag. Oglesby is a big looking kid and he does push the pile himself forward. They spot him up to the 24, but the flag will probably bring this one back. Yeah. It came from the back judge, so uh, definitely looks like it's gonna be against East Central. Chop block. Chop block. So personal foul chop block against the Hornets. Tell everybody what a chop block is. Well, you know, Tony, I was just about ready to comment that I'm glad that they that, that there's certain areas of the of the formation in, in the interior line you cannot block below waist because in the old days you could chop block so easy even out in space on the corners and the edge and the backfield, and you can really mess up someone's knees. I mean, I'm a product of one of those myself with my knee injury, so. I'm glad that now that they're more stringent and there's only certain areas within a yard past the line of scrimmage or, or behind the line of scrimmage, but you can't be engaged and someone come low, and that's what happened. Indeed. So the 15-yard penalty takes it all the way back to the 41. That brings up first down and 25 for the Hornets on a team whose offensive putout hasn't been that much tonight. Here's Oglesby on a keeper. Keeler. <laughs> <laughs> Again, C.J. Keeler, the senior defensive end, gets in there and wraps him up and spins him down for a loss of a couple of more to the 42. Keeler's going against Frankie Martinez, who's a sophomore, 6'2", 225. But he just, he's beating the young sophomore almost every play across the line of scrimmage. And that time, Keeler gets a sack in the, in the backfield. Let me say this as we talk about uh, Joe Hubbard wanting to change culture. He's a sophomore playing in front of a senior. We've got juniors playing in front of juniors. We've got sophomores playing in front of juniors. Yeah. Maybe there's something about the culture change the younger guys are taking over. Here's a handoff by Oglesby and bouncing out. It looks like Lott until he runs into Woodard, who wraps him up and brings him down at the 41. So a gain of about a yard brings up third and again about 25. Yeah. Lott trying to get something out of nothing, and when he bounced outside, the pursuit by Woodard just caught up with him. And so that shows great speed on the defensive secondary as well. That was actually D'Angelo Rosemond with the carry. He is their third tailback. We mentioned their starter, Michael Stevens, out tonight. So Lott's been getting most of the carries, but this time Rosemond, the sophomore, got the carry there. Third and forever. Oglesby hands it up the middle. 
And just a couple of yards is gained up to about the 37. That is, again, Frank Lott. Yeah. I did, they just don't have the personnel that they have confidence in that they can throw the football effectively. But that's kind of the bottom line. Because now they're going into that bunch formation. Well, the only thing you can do out of that is maybe a, a bootleg if you're going to throw the football or run the football. And that's what it's designed to do. So punt formation. The line to go is the 15, and they're at the 37. Still, still a long way to go. Strelzik will punt, try to angle it toward the sideline. It comes near sideline and hits high and out of bounds. Don't know where they'll spot it as the line judge is slow in getting there, but he'll nice. spot it at about the five, six, seven, eight. Oh, he's marking it with the referee up to the nine-yard line okay. is where they say it went out of bounds. Kind of an ugly punt, but the result was pretty good. Yes, it was. It'll <laughs> pin the Rangers back inside their ten. We'll see who comes out on yeah. the offensive side. I was just thinking. Is this the second unit? There are some backups on the offensive line. Who's the quarterback? Corey Eilers. Eilers. Colton okay. Eilers, pardon me. He'll look out, pass to the outside, caught by the receiver out here, which is uh, Anderson, the punter. France Anderson takes a nice route up the left sideline and the pass and throw good for a first down up to the 27. The Rangers in business with some backups on the field right now. 2.55 to go in the third quarter. Absolutely. This is critical time now to get your backups some playing time. Great situation. You're, you're 40 to nothing in the third quarter. You'll probably count on the backups playing the rest of the game. Play clock at 15 is Eilers. And the offensive unit gets the signal. Play clock now near seven. Eilers has backs either side of him. Two receivers to the right. The handoff going to the right is Eggleston. He gets to the corner, turns up the field where he meets a defender who shoves him out of bounds. So Eggleston with a nice gain of about five yards up to the 32-yard line. Met in a hurry there by safety Allen Dukes. So it'll be second down, and we'll say six as they spot it at the 31. Pretty good job by the offensive line, just man-on-man -man blocking that time. And you, you get the ball into Eggleston's hands and let his speed do the rest. Eilers says something to Eggleston in the broken eye. Two receivers to the left. Eggleston up the middle, kind of a trap block as he'll get a couple of yards up to the 39. It'll be third down and about three. Big play here to keep the chains moving and keep the clock running. That's the strategy this series, it looks like. Probably nothing fancy, but maybe that jet sweep, something like that, maybe it might be the call. Speedy receiver is far to the right. That is Rivera. And they jump off sides. They do throw the flag, and they must have been somebody on the Rangers moving. No other reason to stop with the whistle there because I didn't see contact. Who was that, Gavin Rodriguez? He came across the line of scrimmage, but was he drawn off? That's the question. Yep. Looks like a first quarter conference here with our officials. Good procedure. Yep. Okay. So the Rangers will, instead of a third and about three, will have third and about eight as they'll lose five yards on the illegal procedure. So a different play call comes in from the sideline. Third down, eight yards to go from the 29. As a couple of players come in and out, and now Anderson's back in the game. Two receivers go either way. Eilers has a lone set back to his right. Eilers straight drop back, looking left, throws it over the top, intended four, and caught a nice running catch by Gilliam. And he races out of bounds inside the midfield area. Gilliam up to the 41 before he's knocked out of bounds by Dukes. And it's a first down for the Rangers. Well, that was a pretty pass by Eiler. Just set his, his feet planted in the turf. Had time to wait for uh, the receiver to make his break. That was a nice looking pass catch that time. Eilers, who came into the game six of seven on the season for 60 yards and a touchdown, made a nice throw that time. A receiver either way on a two tight end formation. 
Now sending in motion is Rivera. The jet sweep. Got some blocks across the 40. And out of bounds inside the 35. They'll mark him clear down at the 31. That'll be close to a first down. We'll have to see if we have a measurement or not. Nothing fancy, just man-all-man -man blocking by the line of scrimmage. The lead back and give it to the jet sweep, the receiver coming across the formation and let his speed and let his athleticism take over, and that's all it is. It's a very simple play. And they call it a first down as he's at the 31. That's a good play there. So two receivers right, one to the left. Eilers hands it off. Eggleston, right side, carries some people with him, but here comes a flag, and as one of our linemen is laying on top of one of their <laughs> defensive linemen, that might have been where the hold was because that's where the flag landed. Yeah. Good effort by Eggleston that time, cutting and, and darting through the interior line of scrimmage, picking up about five yards basically on, him, on his own. This so, is going to come back, though. So holding, it looks like the left guard, Merrick Everett will be the guilty party, but uh, Ranger offense will just have another challenge to overcome as the third quarter will come to an end shortly. Eight seconds left. I don't think the clock will start until the play begins, so we probably have one more play of the quarter. I am incorrect as the official starts the clock, and that will be the last play of the third quarter. So the Rangers up 40 to nothing with 12 minutes to go in the game here in homecoming 2000 and 2017. 2017 is what we normally say, but <laughs> in any event, we're back on the Ranger Network after this timeout. So this is it, huh? Yep, this is where it all starts and finishes. Joe Pavelic, Jeff Shin, Alan Hill, Pat Bailey, Matt Hilson, Clint Haney, Cody Fuller, Eric Anders, Garrett Smith, Andrew Sandejo, Josh Adkins could have dressed in the soccer. We got work to do, kid. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna go outside. We're gonna get him on the run, we're gonna keep him on the run. Then we're gonna go, 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 go. We won't stop until we're across that goal line. This is a team they say is good. Well, I think we're better than them. So what do you say, man? Let me give it a try. Making videos is not easy. It's confusing and it's hard work. Well, I'm here to tell you, when your back's against the wall, call WIC Productions. It's who we use for game night scoreboard production and the Rangers Network. Amazing, Coach. Another perfectly executed shameless plug. We are about ready to start the fourth quarter here from Ranger Stadium. The Rangers lead at 40 to nothing. 12 minutes of action to go. The Rangers on offense. Up to the 41 yard line of East Central, but it is first and 20. Eilers takes the handoff, gives it to Eggleston, tries to duck under some of the defenders, but uh, there wasn't a whole lot of room there. He gets back maybe a yard. It'll be second down and 19. That was a really good job by the defensive front four for the Hornets, that would be Keeson King and Jordan Shedrock, right up the middle. Those two tackles have been very busy this, this afternoon. So the Rangers let the play clock run a little bit, not trying to be in too much of a hurry. We played 30 seconds into the second half. Eiler surveys the situation and takes the snap. Fakes the handoff and then almost a interception as Evian Thompson read the throw out to uh, Anderson out on the left side. Thompson jumped it but couldn't hang on to the ball, and there's a pick six that didn't happen. Yep, that's that opportunity that Thompson had by jumping that hop route. Had him right in the hands, and I, I don't know if he looked towards the end zone or what, but he had an opportunity there. Nice break, though, on the ball. He did. Nice break. So third down and 
19. Adlers has a receiver either side now. A couple of tight ends. Eggleston the setback. Here's Rivera. The jet sweep going left. Has a blocker. Has a man to get around and he can't because he runs out of real estate. The defense pretty good job getting over there in time. And the Rangers will find themselves fourth down and a bunch. As the ball spotted at the 38. Still about uh, 16 to go. Anderson standing here on the sidelines waiting for Coach Hill's decision. They're going to go for it, which has been the custom most of the time for Coach Hill this season. Islers will send two receivers left and two to the right. Eggleston's the lone setback. Straight drop, short drop, fires a dart. Palamine catches it at the 25, muscles up, tries to get up to the line of scrimmage at the 21, and they're going to mark him inside the 21, and that'll be enough for a first down. The East Central players, Johnson and uh, King, tried everything they could to push him back, but they still give him uh, forward progress for a first down. Unbelievable how you were able to throw that football and get just enough for the first down. As a defender, you know, playing that zone defense, everyone wants to look back at the quarterback. But what you want to do is you get to your zone area, and if a man comes, if a receiver comes in the area, lock on to the man. Bobby Palamine getting some playing time tonight. Makes a big first down catch there. They'll run the ball. Eggleston up the middle, has a seam left side, breaks a tackle, then runs over one of the defenders inside the five down at the three. Greg Eggleston making some nice runs tonight. The sophomore, 5'10", 155. Good yardage on that one. A good another first down at the three. Eggleston got a really nice block by his left guard, Merrick Everett. Six feet, 235 junior. Did a nice job blocking down on the nose tackle. So from the three, it's first and goal. Eggleston again, muscles up, goes across, and that's a touchdown. So the sophomore gets it done, and the Rangers go up 46 with the extra point to come. Nice trap block that time, and it was just a trap play right up the, mid, right up the gut of the defense. Right now, you just see Smith and Valley just wearing down the Hornet defense. Everything they do, they just don't have enough gas in them to be able to defend. Mason Reed on for the extra point. This one is up and good. It's 47 to nothing. If my math is right, it should be 49, right? That's the seventh touchdown. So yes. we've, we've had one missed and one, but one bobbled Bobble and one missed. Yes. Yeah. so 47 to nothing. The Rangers lead it. 9.54 to go in this one. We're back after this timeout on the Ranger Network. Introducing Hut Rewards from Pizza Hut. Finally, a rewards program that gives you points toward free pizza with every dollar you spend online. And get unlimited double rewards through October 1st. Don't settle for a piece of the pie. Join Hut Rewards today and earn free pizza faster. That's why no one out pizzas the Hut. It's time for football. And Red McCombs Ford is powering the Rangers to another successful season. So go Rangers and good luck from Red McCombs Ford, the truck capital of Texas, and SAFord.com. We're back to Ranger Stadium. The Rangers lead it 47 to nothing over East Central in the second district game of the season. The Rangers with a win tonight will improve to 5-0 and 2-0 and in district play. East Central will fall to 0-5 and 0-2. And and 11 plays, 91 yards on the drive. It consumed five minutes and 13 seconds, which is the best news of the night. A lengthy drive. Mason Reed with the wind at his back. Angles this one to Davis who bobbles it. It's down at the 10. It's loose. Who will fall on it? It looks like Davis got it back on his knees at the 14. A couple of Rangers had a shot, but Davis got a paw on it and brought it back in. And even though it went off his chest, it is still East Central ball. 13-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Yeah, bad field position after that bobbled uh, catch. But this has kind of been the storyline all night long. You know, just when you think that East Central has a little momentum and getting a little bit of rhythm on offense, they have a blow up or they get bad field position or they allow a big play by Smith and Valley. And it just, it just blows the game wide open. Looks like they have a different quarterback and it looks like it's their receiver. 
Strelzik. He'll hand it off. A couple of yards up to maybe the 14-yard line is Frank Lott. Give him a yard to the 14. It's second down and nine. Strelzik not listed as the backup quarterback, but senior Blake Casey is, and he has not come out here. So, in fact, I see him now on the sideline in shorts and a jersey. So, That's one reason. so many of their players tonight are in street clothes, it's kind of hard to tell who's whom. Strelzik, the backup quarterback, on to take the call, takes the handoff, fakes it to Lott, keeps it himself. He's wrestled down after he gets back near the line of scrimmage, maybe to the 15, a gain of one. It'll be third and eight. Caleb Reed, the backup tackle, junior, 195 pounds, did a nice job going down the line of scrimmage, shedding his block and getting in on the uh, on the uh, Stilzik for the tackle. Brian Robles, a backup defensive end, was also near the bottom of that pile again. 0 for 10. On third and nine, the Hornets are 0 for 10 on third downs tonight. This one will not be any easier than any of the rest. Strelzik still in a huddle, and the play no clock hurry. now at five. They're not going to get this one off either. No, no and I'm hurry. not real sure their coach is going to call a timeout, but he just did. He just did. Well, that's, that, that's just really. I'm telling you, if you're in a playground and you take a, a huddle that long, kids are yelling at you. You, you, you know, <laughs> exactly. that, why are you huddling for that long to call a play? Everybody knows in football today that the plays are what? Four or five discussions, you know, something 19, yeah. 20. You know, it, it's not much. You get an offensive line, you get a, you it's, know. You, <laughs> it's not that complicated. I mean, it can be complicated, but not that complicated. Uh, what well, my question is, is whoever's making the call, is it coming from the press box? to someone on the field and it relayed to someone trying to simulate or run the play in. That's what I don't know. All I know is they took the huddle at about 17 and didn't break it till five. So him describing those four or five calls took way too long. Way too long. Maybe that's because he's a backup quarterback and he just wanted to encourage his guys. But uh, well, 7.47 to go in the game, that is not a penalty or a timeout you should have to take third and long. Strelzik sends two receivers right, one to the left. It's a fake. Well, oh, what's the, there's whistles. Why, why do you stop the play? It was a busted play. Strelzik, uh, he turned to the right to fake a handoff. Wait a minute, what happened? So it was a non-play. 30 10. The umpire is yelling at the referee. He's not real sure what was supposed to happen there. Now the line judge has come all the way onto the field. There's some confusion. We, we talked about this ref these officials. And the play clock's running right now. Now they have to call another timeout. I mean, the umpire still had the ball in his hand. How were they supposed to go into formation? There's some confusion out on the field, and I'm not sure anyone is more confused than the <laughs> officiating crew. But it but is Tony, 47 to nothing. But Tony, the referee actually stopped the play in the middle of the play. I, for, for whatever reason. Well, the back judge was running in too. I, I, they all had something, and I'm not real sure what it was. But they forced East Central to call another timeout, and I'm not sure that is something we needed to do. And again, we've kept this one here. 7.45 to go. Two seconds ran off when there wasn't a play. So now it is third and nine, and we are going to have a play. The play clock starts. The Hornets are at the line of scrimmage. Strelzik sends two receivers to the right. Wants to roll to the right. Has a man in the flat. Throws it. Completed. Short of the first down. Looked like that was Lott who caught it. That's a good-looking play. A little rolled out by Stelzik that time, and he could probably have the option of keeping it and running with it. But he had Lott wide open on the, on the out route, and he threw it, and his nice catch is just a little short for the first down. So it is fourth down in about a yard. Do they have 11 players out there? One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. Yes, they do. They're just all bunched up. <laughs> They're bunched up on the right side. Oh, my. Play clock at 10. Strelzik back in punt formation. He'll kick this one. 
One of his highest kicks of the night. Woodard wants to fair catch it, but too many people in his way. It takes a Ranger bounce as much as anything and goes dead at the Hornet 46-yard line. The punt of about 26 yards and no return with 6.52 to go. The Rangers have the ball and the lead of 47 to nothing. It's probably good that Ricky Rios didn't catch that and actually have a chance to make a play on it. There's no telling how, how far he might have ran that one back. Got the second unit, second uh, offensive line in. And the third quarterback, Christian Hallam now in at quarterback for the Rangers. Two receivers left. Tailback is, uh, this one's Leo Garcia, and he's loose. He turns the left corner off left tackle and turns it upfield and gets a first down carry up to the 34-yard line. As players are shuffling in right and left. I now. really can't keep up, yeah. <laughs> honestly. Allen is a... Uh, as a senior, yeah, Six he's about 180 pounds. He was the backup quarterback last year, okay. All right. and sends two receivers to the right. He's going to keep it coming right on first and ten. Stays in bounds and gets hit and tackled by uh, Jordan Garcia. The linebacker brings him down after a gain of one. It's second down and nine. And they're doing some more substituting on the offensive line. You're getting everybody involved tonight. That's great. It is a good thing. Yeah. Wyatt Doss, the receiver on this side. Question for you, Tony. Kuykendall and not real sure who that other receiver is on the far side. Yeah. I'll ask you the question after this. Okay. Game. Second and nine from the 33. Hallam takes it, hands it off. Nice, nice play fake afterwards as the running back, it looks like it's Garcia again, jumps over one defender, gets up to about the 30, a gain of three, it'll be third down and six. Go ahead. Well, my question is, is that if you play as a JV, are you able to still be moved up for a game on the varsity? Because yes. it looks like right now that they are playing a lot of the younger kids that might have even played in the JV game. And this gives them good varsity experience. Yeah, I don't think there's any rule against that. Okay. So two receivers left. Call this a full house backfield with three guys back there. Going left is the running back. This time it's Spencer. He cuts up field off left tackle and gets five, six, yeah, no, four yards ahead to about the 30, 26 yard line. So it'll be, that'll be a fourth down, fourth down in about two. They're going to go for it, of course. <laughs> and they're still substituting more players. <laughs> three or four specialists come in and three or four others go yeah. out. If you have a Smithson Valley helmet on, you're playing <laughs> tonight. You're in the game. Hallam surveys and gets the Hornets to jump that time. I don't first know down. if the Rangers moved, but that'll be a first down by penalty if they yeah. didn't. Good hard snap count. And with 4.07 to go, a first down on fourth down. So a fourth down conversion. Ball will be spotted at the 21 where it'll be first and 10. As they try to eat up as much time as they can and they're just methodically marching down the field. Now first down on the 21. Great opportunity to uh, score again. Game clock runs under four minutes to go. Play clock at 10 as the Rangers break their huddle. Two receivers right. And off to nice run. That is Spencer again. Nice run off the right side. Good push by the offensive line. Gets a nine-yard carry. You know what I like about this? There are some seniors that maybe just never was on the first or second uh, depth chart, but now they get a chance because this is their senior year to be able to actually play in a game. And so I think this is a great idea, that a great situation that uh, Coach Hill has his team in that these kids get a chance to even get on the field and play. So. No doubt about it. Two receivers right, a full house backfield. Now in motion, well, they split the side. Here's Spencer coming right, has some blocks, has one man to beat, gets a shirt pulled but he gets a first down yardage inside the 10 before he's wrestled down by three different defenders. As 
Charles Webster, a senior linebacker, comes in and puts a lick on him, but not until he gets up to the seven for a first and goal for the Rangers. Yeah, also, Jordan Garcia, who's also a senior linebacker, 6280. He was in on that tackle as well. Clock keeps running. It does as it goes under 235 before this one is snapped. Hallam with two receivers to the left. Gives the handoff up near the goal line. Everybody trying to push. Garcia. They'll spot it at the one. I do believe you're right. It is Garcia who gets a carry to the goal line and then gets shuffled, shuffled yeah. in and out. Wait a minute. Leave him in there. So it is. Dane Spencer, the junior, beside Hallam now with a two tight end formation, a receiver either side, but everybody in tight. Spencer moves to the right of Hallam. Now in motion is the receiver, and there's a receiver sweep to Hilston who goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Michael Hilston, the senior wide receiver, gets a touchdown, and the Rangers go to 53 to nothing as we've got uh, under two minutes to play in this one. You know, this, what a signature play that the Rangers have in that jet sweep and the, the variation and other things you can do off of that jet sweep and the fake, the bootleg, the quarterback keeper off of it. It's just a really good play. And when you have that kind of speed on, on the option with the wide receivers coming across the formation, it's just a, a good staple to have in your arsenal. So the Rangers will go for the extra point. And this is a different kicker, and it looks like Brian Robles, who got a tackle earlier as a defensive end, kicks the extra point for 54 to nothing. He kicked that over the back of uh, the stands. <laughs> he did get a good looking kick. He, he did indeed. The Rangers up 54 to nothing. We're back after this timeout. Just press enter, and your GBTC Home Home DVR will record your show automatically. Thanks, Doug from GBTC who looks exactly like Ranger Senior C.J. Keeler. I'm just Doug, here to help. Fumble! Here you go. Can I help you set up your favorite channel list now? Just press enter and your GBTC Home Home DVR will record your show automatically. Thanks, Doug from GBTC who looks exactly like Ranger Senior C.J. Keeler. I'm just Doug, here to help. Fumble! Here you go. Can I help you set up your favorite channel list now? Rangers lead at 54 to nothing. We're back to Ranger Stadium. A minute 44 to go in this one. Again, the Rangers will improve to 5-0 on the season, 2-0 in district play. Judson will win tonight, and Clemens will win tonight, and New Braunfels won last night. We'll go through those standings just momentarily. Robles will kick off. His kick angles towards the near sideline where Davis will let it go into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 from the 25 for the Hornets. Smithson Valley goes to 5-0, 2-0. Judson goes to 5-0, 2-0. Clemens goes to 5-0, 2-0. And after that, uh, New Braunfels with a win over Canyon. They're both 1-1. One one. Wagner falls, so they're 0-2 in district play. Steele is 0-2 in district play. East Central is 0-2 in district play. Would you have thought that Steele would be 0-2 in district play at this point? Not at all. September? Not at all. I wouldn't either. So the Hornets will have what is likely to be their final offensive possession of the night. Looks like Strelzik's back at quarterback. Takes the snap, hands it off. That is yet a new running back, Ivan Chivara. The senior wide receiver, 5'8", 150. Good to see him get a little action tonight. He gained about five up to the 30, second down and five. <laughs> well, play, clock at, play clock has run almost 20 seconds, and they're still in a huddle. A minute 15 to go. Finally, the play comes in. Strelzik 
Sends two receivers to the right. There's a tight end on the left, a wing on the right, the lone setback. And he lets the play clock go all the way under five before he snaps the ball. Hands it off again and down by contact. Is Chavaria, the senior Negay, and uh, it's second down and about seven now from the 28 yard line. Game clock under a minute to go at 44 and running. And again, they huddle up with no hurry. No, none whatsoever. All game long, it's been like this. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's one way of keeping your opponent's offense off the field. As long as you move the chains and make first downs, that's sure. a great strategy. Sure. Strelzik again waits for the snap. Hands it off for the third time, and the nice. Rangers will nice. stop. So it'll be fourth down, and that'll be the final play of the game. As the clock goes under 10 seconds to go, the Rangers will come away with a 54 to nothing victory over East Central on a beautiful Friday night here at Ranger Stadium. Homecoming 2017 for the Rangers. Who jolt across the field for handshakes and stuff. We'll have a post game show after this timeout on the Ranger Network. Where'd you get the taco? Smoky Mo's Barbecue. I got the Grab Go Taco Combo. Smoky Mo's, they have breakfast there? Tacos? Say go. Smoky Mo's has breakfast? Yes, sir. Breakfast tacos, biscuits, and bowls to go. Now I know. Biscuits and tacos to go. To go? To go. Tacos. To go. To go. It's really great to be part of this wonderful community. Smithson Valley is about friends, family, and taking good care of one another. And at Ferris Orthodontics, we believe in the same thing. Our new patients are referred to us by friends. We treat everyone like family, and we will take care of you by giving you a healthy smile. Ferris Orthodontics. Line them up. All right, the Rangers win it. Their victory is 54 to nothing over East Central. The Rangers again move to 5 and 0 on the season, 2 and 0 in district. Three teams tied for first still after tonight. Judson also 5 and 0 and 2 and 0. Clemens 5 and 0 and 2 and 0. The Rangers have a bye week next Friday night. They will not be playing. But we will have a broadcast for you. Canyon Lake will be on the air next Friday night. We'll have that call for you. Otherwise, the Rangers back in action in two weeks at Wagner. And the last five games are like this. Week seven, it's Wagner on the road. Then Clemens at home. Then at Canyon. Then at Judson. And New Braunfels at home in the season finale. The regular season finale. So the Rangers have five down and five to go. Halfway through the season and still spotless. And I know that's good news for Coach Larry Hill. Great news, as a matter of fact, and you know, being able to play your second and third stringers in the middle of the season is pretty important as well because they've had a couple injuries to some key players. Now he's been able to see some of the backups rise up and see how well they can play as well. So this is this is pretty good prescription for the season if you're a Ranger fan. It is without a doubt. So again, we're going to say good night to you on this beautiful Friday night from Ranger Stadium. I am Tony Brubaker alongside of Jeff Gandy and Austin Milam. That's a wrap, 54 to nothing, the Rangers. Good night and God bless.